Natasha Denona always seems to captivate me with her launches. And as always, I have picked up her newest one, the High Glam Powder Foundation. I picked up my powder foundation in my matching concealer shade R2. It is a perfect match, worked out wonderfully for me. So if you're my complexion, that is the one you wanna go for. I believe shade R1 is just so much lighter. It wouldn't really work for my complexion. This is a beautiful compact. It is a matte finish. It's not heavy in the hand, but it's not lightweight and cheap feeling. It does come with a nice mirror. I'm not gonna be using this mirror, at least not anytime soon. So I left my sticker on there. It also comes with another mirror on the other side and a little sponge here with a little finger flap. I think that's cute. I did use this today. She describes this powder as a blurring flex tech hybrid powder. It is a matte finish, but it's supposed to give you a luminous matte. It is a medium buildable foundation formulated with skincare benefits for a smooth poreless look. It is $55. I bought mine directly from the Natasha Denona website. I was able to use a coupon code with it. So if you were looking to pick this up and you wanna get it at a discount, you can use content creators codes to pick this up. And there is 12.5 grams of product in here with a 24 month shelf life. You know what, I'm gonna try the Glossy Invisible Shield sunscreen and the Super Goop Mineral Unseen sunscreen side by side. Left side for the Glossier and right side for the Super Goop. Biggest difference here is one, the texture of the Super Goop is much thicker and two, it's a mineral sunscreen so it's white. You're never gonna get a mineral sunscreen to be perfectly clear. I actually don't have a preference over mineral and chemical as long as my skin doesn't react poorly to them, I'm okay. And as long as I'm getting the protection I need. Do the clear one first. Then I'm gonna color correct with my Charlotte Tilbury color corrector before I do anything else. I'm using the powder foundation today and I wanna see how much coverage it provides me, but I, I just, I wanna color correct. I got my little friend on my nose here. <laughs> I'm not too happy about it. My color correcting is on point. So I'm gonna use my Natasha Denona Hygiene Serum. And I wanna use this before I use that powder foundation. I want just a little extra, extra glow. I use that same brush I used for my sunscreen. I find with powder foundations, and I haven't used the Natasha Denona powder foundation yet, but I find that my skin desperately needs hydration and a little bit of that extra moisture, no matter what. So I'm gonna use a little extra, extra. And now for the moment of truth. I haven't even touched this yet. I bought it in R2, which is my concealer shade. Speaking of, I wanna do concealer first on the left side of my face and then after on the right side and see how well that does above powder. So usually with a powder foundation, I will conceal before I ever use the foundation. But I'm gonna try a little different this time. My favorite powder foundation that I have right now is the Fenty Beauty, and I've had that one for a while. I just love it. So when I wanna wear a powder foundation, that one's my go-to. I do have the Chanel powder foundation, and I love that one too, but the Fenty one just performs better. It's actually been a few minutes. <laughs> I've been working my butt off downstairs. It is 12, well, 12, 15 in the afternoon. I've got my base on, I've got concealer on this under eye and a couple other spots in my face, but I don't have concealer under this eye. There is a puff to this. I am gonna go ahead and try it. Normally I would try a powder foundation brush like this one. I'll give this a go just for, for the science in me. I'm gonna try. Well, let me swatch it here on the back of my hand as well. This one's R2. I don't like using sponges like this for powder foundation. 
Interesting. Okay, not overly fond of the little puff here, but it is a great shade match. Okay, this the sponge is soft, but this little the stitching here on the sides that actually <laughs> irritated my under eye there. Wasn't expecting that. So I'm gonna use a sponge on this side here, and then I'll use the powder brush on the other side. Okay. My only complaint with this sponge, and I might be the only one, so it's probably just user error, is I feel like I have to keep digging back into the powder. It just feels like it takes a little bit longer. This side of my face with the foundation used with the, the puff here, and then this side without just my sunscreen. Okay, let me use my preferred method now. I'm gonna use an IT Cosmetics foundation brush, or a powder brush really, but I'm going to put this everywhere with the brush, which gives me, I think a little bit less coverage doing it this method as opposed to the sponge, but it's so much quicker and easier. I feel like I'm not really wasting product so much. Okay, powder is on. I use the brush on this side, the sponge on this side. I like the brush application so much better. It's so much quicker. It looks a little less powdery, a little less matte, a little less flat. Just looks slightly more natural with this side. It's got amazing coverage for a powder. It feels comfortable. And I do have that serum underneath, so it does feel really nice. And I do have a very soft radiance, which is because of all that. However, it's not bad. Let's try it with the concealer over the powder on my right eye. I'm gonna use my Natasha Denona concealer. This one is in the shade R2. I'm gonna use my Sigma brush. Normally I would never put concealer over the top of powder but I'm intrigued to see how well this will work. Some people do it. I've never done it, especially with powder foundation. It never hurts to try new methods. Interesting. Okay, I will be honest. I'm not overly fond of that application. Hmm, it looks nice and even on both sides. My allergies are getting to me. Okay, it layers over just nice. I don't have any, any problems with the layering. It's not caking up. Like I can see more luminosity on this side. It looks a little bit better concealed than this side does. Hmm. We'll see. I'll finish my face and see how it looks at the end. I'm gonna end up having to powder over this one again though because I need that concealer to not move. So let's try using this powder over the concealer one more time. Very lightly, I'm gonna use a Sonia G brush to dust it over that concealer. Application-wise, I don't like the concealer over the powder. I can see in my mirror that it's kind of migrating a little bit, kind of settling into my fine lines under my eyes. I prefer concealer under my powder. So this side, even though it looks less concealed, it looks better. It doesn't look as cakey as the right eye. It is 1.45 in the afternoon. I actually did take a break from the moment I started this video to go take care of my son. So I'm finishing up this video quite a ways after starting, but that's okay. It just kind of gives me a better idea of how I'm looking. Before I go off and do things that I need to get done today, I love the look I created, but I don't think I agree with poreless. I'm gonna zoom you in and show you my cheeks, I don't really have large pores and I don't really have foundations that accentuate my pores too much, but I feel as though the powder foundation is accentuating my pores around my T-zone. I kind of look like a little orange peel. I'll do a check-in halfway through my day. I'm not sure exactly what time I'm gonna take this foundation off, but hopefully throughout the day, I'll have a better idea of how this wears, at least for a first impression. And one of the things I wanted to do was compare the foundation to the concealer shade. Since I didn't do that earlier in the video, I wanna do that now. 
I'm going to swatch the foundation next to the concealer just so you can see how close of a match these two are. Foundation next to concealer, I honestly, these are very close. These are actually very, very close and I'm quite impressed. The powder definitely looks just a touch lighter than the concealer, but also the concealer is a thicker consistency. So they're a really good match to each other. So I would think that if you're looking to pick up this foundation in general, if you know what shade you are with the concealer, shade match that. It is eight o'clock at night. I've had this on for about seven, seven-ish hours. I wanna point out, I'm definitely breaking up around my mouth. I don't normally break up with my foundation around my lips here. I'm not happy with the way it's sitting on my face. My pores look accentuated and I don't have large pores and they don't normally feel and look so large. My mouth looks probably the worst of all the foundations I've worn recently. I have a lot of breaking up around my lips. My forehead actually looks pretty darn good. I'll admit I'm actually impressed with the way the foundation is sitting in my forehead. Normally I don't have foundation look so good without some grippy primer to fill in, but this actually looks pretty decent. As far as my under eyes go, they don't look terrible, but they don't look the best. I'm okay with the way they look. My perimeter is okay. I don't have any issues with my perimeter in general just because of how dry my skin can get. My chin is okay, but it still looks like it's kind of sitting on my skin in an awkward way, accentuating pores that aren't really there. And my least favorite is my nose. My nose is definitely broken up around the edges where my nostrils are and right around the front tip of my nose where I did not highlight, I can see the most breaking down. And I do wanna mention that I do not do a touch up throughout the day when I'm doing a wear test on foundations. And as a side note, my eyeshadow, despite wearing a primer, has not lasted. It is 10.23 in the evening Close enough to 10.30, I am completely wiped out. I'm in my jammies. The foundation has been on now, well, since one o'clock, so going on nine and a half hours, I am beat. I'm just ready to get this off. I'm not super happy with how it's worn. I'll be honest, I know dry skin, powder foundation, I get it, but I love powder foundations and I think there's a place for them. The most disappointing thing for me is how poorly it has worn on my nose. I'm not happy with that at all. I don't tend to lose a lot of foundation on my nose. It's usually the quickest to go for pretty much everyone because of how the, the cells and the blood vessels and the, the oil glands are in your nose. But mine is not wearing well at all. Granted, I didn't really wear a primer with this, just sunscreen to test it. And by the way, both of these sunscreens that I used today look amazing. Neither side of my face looks worse or better than the other in terms of the sunscreen. I don't think that was an issue whatsoever. So they're both really nice. It just depends on if you wanna spend more money for less SPF, if you want mineral versus chemical but they both have options. Now, the foundation around my lips has completely migrated. It is pretty much gone around my lip liner. It has broken down quite a bit at my nose. My under eyes, they look okay. I'm not mad about my under eyes one bit. They're honestly decent. The perimeter of my face has migrated and I don't tend to lose foundation around the perimeter, but the powder foundation has all but disappeared around my chin. In on both sides. I don't hate the way my face looks. My forehead looks great for having a powder foundation. Honestly, it probably looks the best out of the entire place of, on my face. I'm gonna hoof it through this outro. I just cannot stay awake any longer. This powder foundation, I need to try it on a different day with a different primer, something else underneath, see how it wears, maybe something a little more gripping as opposed to glowy. I use the serum that Natasha Denona has. Maybe I should just try something else. I don't wanna be unfair on a first impressions and give it a bad review, so I will try it again on a different day with different primers, different things, different techniques, and see how it wears then, and then update you on my thoughts. 
And as always, I hope you enjoyed this review of the new Natasha Denona Pressed Powder Foundation. Everything on my face will be linked down below. If you click on those links, they are affiliated. So thank you so much for supporting my channel. Do something for yourself today because you are worth it.